Today we honor St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzi. St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzi was born in 1566 of the second most prominent family in Florence. That is after the famous family of the Medici. And Catherine, as was her baptismal name, entered the Carmelite monastery there in Florence, after growing up as a young child, living very piously, when she was at the age of 16, and her parents, who originally wanted her to marry and did find several suitors to marry their daughter, eventually gave in to Catherine's request, though with much reluctance. She chose that particular monastery, uh, the Carmelite monastery, monastery there at Florence, called Holy Mary of the Angels, because they were able to receive Holy Communion every day, which was something rare at the time. And Catherine had a special devotion and ardent love for our Lord in Holy Communion. She felt within herself a great desire also to suffer for the love of her divine spouse and also for sinners. And while we know St. Teresa of Avila was famous for having said, to suffer or to die, St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzi, the name that she received upon making her vows, used to say, to suffer and not to die. She desired to continue to live simply to suffer. Again, not for its own sake, but out of love for God and for the salvation of souls. And so our Lord tried her in various ways, both interiorly by means of temptations, aridity and prayer and desolation, and also exteriorly by means of bodily sickness. Practically speaking, much like St. Teresa of Avila, St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzi was always sick. And she was also assaulted uh, with, by diabolical attacks. But she remained patient, steadfast, generous, and joyful throughout it all, all for love, which motivated her. And so our Lord re rewarded her constancy with various mystical gifts, ecstasy, the ability to read hearts, both of her novices and also those who were outside of the cloister, and also to foretell future events. She died on May 25th after enduring a painful sickness which lasted for three years in the year 1607. And her body remains incorrupt in Florence even till this day. And so the life and example of St. Mary Magdalene reminds us of the great value of suffering for the love of God and the salvation of souls. That is, suffering enables us to demonstrate our love for God and also to grow in it. If in order to unite our wills with God's will, if doing what we know is pleasing to him costs us some suffering, or some sacrifice, then there is a proof of true love for God and not a love that is self-seeking. We also know that our suffering, united with the sufferings of Christ, can obtain the grace of conversion and salvation for souls. As St. Paul says in his letter, to the Colossians. I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up those things that are wanting of the sufferings of Christ in my flesh for his body, which is the church. May we all be as generous and constant in our service of the Lord 
as Saint Mary Magdalene de Pazzi. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.